War has raged for over a year. Blood, tears, and death has been the order of the day. The Dot Nation has been pushed to the brink, so the Dots have launched a last-minute attempt to end the war. But in order for Operation Blue Dawn to work, the Dot Army needs to defend the nation. Supreme Commander Julius Squarezar, seeing that this is an opportunity to end the war, orders the First Square Legion to march on Dot DC, the capital of the Dot Nation while the 2nd Square Legion marches towards Dot Francisco, the last remaining holdout in the West. With the Dot Nation's best general in Dot DC, Dot Dent Francisco's defense falls to William Sherdot. Sherdot must lead a successful defense with an ill-equipped army against a larger force. Forces. The Square Forces are led by Squario Africanus, consisting of 17,500 infantry, 5,000 cavalry, 2,500 archers, 100 giants, 10 various types of siege weapons, along with one mage, for a total of 25,111. Dot forces are led by the aforementioned William Sherdot, consisting of 5,000 infantry, 10,000 conscripted peasants, 3,000 archers, 1,000 cavalry, 25 cannons and ballistas, 4 lower mages, and 1 high mage, for a total of of 19,030. Deployment. Africanus quickly surrounded the city, taking the small hamlets on the border. Africanus focused his forces on the west side of Francisco, due to its older defenses and important significance. For on the west wall there lies an inscription reading, Let this wall be a testament to the Dot Nation, and from this day forward, let no square go east of Dot Francisco. Africanus then set his cavalry around the city in order to block any escape by Sherdot. While Sherdot, realizing there was no chance for escape, told his cavalry to dismount as their high speeds would be less useful in an urban environment. Knowing that the peasant militia would easily rout when combat had started, he ordered them to remain inside the city walls preparing defenses for once the walls fell. On the wall, Sherdot's infantry and archers defended the city while the mages stayed within their tower to observe from afar and act as they were needed. Wednesday, Africana sends his infantry in a spread out formation towards the city wall. Sherdot tells his cannons and infantry to focus their fire on the oncoming squares. But this is merely a distraction, as most of his infantry are digging an underground tunnel into the city. The mage of the square forces uses his magic to create dummies of the square army tricking the dots to believe most of them are waiting outside the city walls. Sherdot has no idea of the tunnels. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Square forces continue to dig the tunnel under the city, while Sherdot is distracted by the oncoming infantry. Sunday, Sherdot thinking something was up, consults his mages on what's happening. His mages dispel the dummies, revealing the missing troops. They then use their magic to find the troops hidden underneath the ground. Upon discovering the missing troops, Sherdot orders his cannons to fire on the tunnels, causing them to collapse. Africanus orders any remaining troops in the tunnels to evacuate. Monday, after its failure with the tunnel, Africanus orders a large-scale attack while his newly built siege weapons fire upon the city. Sherdot orders his troops to defend the wall at all costs. Square forces with troops in the city after the supporting giants died to ballista boats. Tuesday, Africanus orders his archers and catapults to aim for the ballistas and cannons located on the wall. Sherdot, knowing the importance of the ballistas and cannons, orders them taken from the wall, but the barrage from the archers and catapults delays any form of withdrawal, so he orders his cavalry to remount and charge out to distract the archers and catapults. Wednesday and Thursday, Africanus launches repeated attacks at the city but fails to put enough force in the attacks in order to seal the deal, while Sherdot bravely defends the wall with what little army he has left. The mages duel over the city, but the mages seem to only counteract one another. Friday, the lieutenant generals of Squaresar's army arrive after Squaresar's defeat in D.C. The lieutenant generals seek redemption after the defeat in D.C. order Africanus to take the city while Sherdot orders the remaining gunpowder to be stored within the walls, ready to explode at a moment's notice. Saturday, Africanus orders a massive attack with all his forces to finally end the siege, 
but as his troops climb over the wall, they find them deserted. As this happened, Sherdot orders the gunpowder lit, causing a massive explosion, decimating the square infantry. Stones from the wall explode upward, landing all over the city, causing massive fires throughout it. Sherdot leads his remaining army out of the city in an attempt to defend the citizens. As he marches out of the city, the cavalry waiting outside springs into action, caught. As he marches out of the city, the cavalry waiting outside spring into action, chasing down Sherdot. So Sherdot leads any willing soldiers to charge against the oncoming squares. None of them would turn down the chance, and none would return. Repercussions After the fall of Dot Francisco, the Square Empire holds control of all lands on the west side of the Dot Nation. The capital of the Dot Nation was relocated from Dot DC to New Dot City due to security issues at Dot DC. Africanus became supreme commander of the Square Forces after Squares are died in DC and the lieutenant generals luckily all died on their way back to the Square Empire. The Second Battle of Dot Francisco would be remembered and venerated for Sure Dot's heroic sacrifice. During the Second Square Dot War, Dot Francisco was an important target for forces to retake. If you want to know more about the First Battle of Dot Francisco or other conflicts during the First Square Dot War, you can play my upcoming game Dot Tower. There will be a devlog on it next week.